Hello, hello everyone. Hey. Yeah, let's wait uh, for more people. Hey, how are you? Hi, Toti. Fine, thank you. Uh, so maybe I needed to switch to the CNCF car. I cannot do that. I'm in my car. So I thought that you or Feynman will do that. Yeah. Uh, Feynman didn't join yet. Uh, let me try that. Okay, I have switched my account. Let me try to screen it. Uh... Uh, let me rejoin, sorry.
Hello, I'm back. Uh, I can hear you, but I cannot see you. Okay, I'm now using the notary project. Hunt. <clears throat> Let me clear the screening. It seems we are the only two that are on the meeting. No, I see others. I other think people. I just mute. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. I cannot see on my phone. Uh, it seems that I cannot stream in this. Session. When I click the item, it asks me to use another account. Um, it seems I cannot <clears throat> uh, do the live streaming for this meeting, so I will, uh, I don't want to spend more time, so I will uh, upload the video manually later after this meeting, okay, because we have the recording somewhere, I will upload it uh, manually. Let's get start. Uh, let me share my win for the agenda. Can you see my screen? Yep. Okay, uh, let's get started. Uh, today we have uh, four agendas. Uh, two from Pritesh, one from me, myself, another from Fiman. Uh, I would suggest that uh, we start uh, uh, with uh, my uh, topic, uh, which is um, uh, more important at right now. What do you think, Pritesh? Sure, yeah, sounds good to me. Okay. Yeah, let's uh, first uh, uh, follow up action points from previous meetings. Uh, I think the most uh, important uh, uh, one are related to the uh, first is related to the naming, uh, naming issues and uh, uh, related uh, notation V1 release uh, date, whether we needed to do any uh, changes. And also we needed to follow up the uh, government's uh, document maintainers and the code owners for the new uh, GitHub Action Repository. Um, so for the uh, naming issue, uh, maybe Toddy, you can uh, help to provide some updates. Uh, yes, uh, actually I heard back from Nias. Uh, he sent me a message. They need a little bit more time. So uh, tomorrow uh, they want to kind of uh, finalize this. So hopefully tomorrow we'll have uh, back from uh, Nias, uh, Milint, and uh, Samir. Um, okay, let me take... Uh, Samir is on this meeting as well. Uh, feel free to add more information. Um, yeah, I have nothing more to add. I just came back from vacation, so I'll go with what Toddy has. Seems to be the latest information. Okay. Uh, so tomorrow, 
uh, Nias will uh, share more updates to us, right? Uh, sorry, I meant uh, Milind, not uh, Nias. Ah, so, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Milind will provide uh, uh, updates on the main issue. Tomorrow, I think it's July 18. Okay. Um, I think based on the uh, updates from meaning, uh, we can then decide uh, whether uh, end of July is still the uh, target dating for uh, notation V1, right? Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So for now, we uh, stick to the uh, end of July uh, as uh, the notation V1 release date. Okay. Uh, then the next uh, one is related to the uh, notation action, this repo. Uh, we did uh, some discussion uh, last week uh, during the committee meeting. Uh, so I, I think we don't have anything uh, blocking this, right? Uh, Todi, um, since the PR yeah. was created by you, so. Uh, sorry, yeah, that uh, fell through the cracks. Uh, I kind of forgot on Friday. Um, I will look at this uh, in maybe a couple of minutes when I get home. Okay, thanks. So let me know if you need any help. Uh, let me take. So you will um you will update uh, you will resolve the comments for the PR today, right? Okay. Totally yes. We'll resolve the. Okay. Yeah, feel free to stop me because I cannot see the chat message, if any. Um, there are several other comments, uh, actions. I think the uh, lottery project at Enlightening Broadcast, uh, any updates and also the maintainer track. Uh, so, so Pradesh, you will join. Uh, the maintenance track with Todi, right? Uh, any updates on on this one? I can yeah, provide okay. updates on those. Uh, so for enlightening, uh, uh, Milint uh, uh, will be the uh, co-presenter. So uh, we are still trying to figure out whether we'll be two presenters there or whether Milint will be the only one. I think his preference is that I also uh, present. Uh, so we are discussing this with Whitney. Uh, it's targeted, I think, for the end of August. I don't remember the date, but uh, we are kind of discussing the details about that. Uh, for the maintainers track, I submitted uh, the uh, call for paper. Uh, I added Samir and Pritesh and Justin Cormack as uh, uh, co-presenters. So we can change those uh, co-presenters. Uh, like I think uh, we should finalize this by end of August and uh, we can say who will be the people presenting there. We don't need four people. I'm fine. Uh, I think also Cormac said that uh, he's okay if uh, he's not there. For now, I added uh, all four of us. Uh, once again, we can decide a little bit later who the actual presenters will be. Pritesh, you and Samir should have received invite uh, from, I don't remember what was the tool, but it should be uh, inviting you to add your details there. Yeah, I got the invite. Yeah, I'll check my inbox. I haven't 
Yeah, but yeah, I'll do it. But yeah, I think it's a good plan to have a couple of options and we can decide closer to the date. Okay. <clears throat> so Toddy, uh, yeah, I think there is a deadline for the maintenance track. So Toddy submit the document with, uh, uh, I think uh, it should be the proposals of co-speakers. Uh, uh, so we can decide later, right? In, in maybe in August for the uh, real co-speaker uh, for the maintenance track. Okay. Um, yeah, for the, for the podcast, uh, uh, I think the date is uh, moved to August, right? So meaning will be uh, the one, maybe there will be more, but at least meaning we'll work with Toddy on the podcast, right? That uh, is correct, yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, a security audit report uh, was published. So congratulations to everyone and thanks for the <laughs> for the hard work working with the security. Yeah, this is, uh, uh, I think this is uh, 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 a big achievement for our uh, Notary Project community. Um, and for the time timing, this issue, uh, should we uh, already comment? So uh, I think that's all the actions we need to follow up. Uh, let me switch back to the agenda. Yeah, anything else around this uh, action point? If no, uh, we will start from the uh, first topic. Uh, no, then uh, we start uh, from this first one. Uh, this is uh, by Pritesh. Yep, I can talk about that. I basically wanted to know the future's plans for notation. I'm suggesting that we support signing of any arbitrary data. And it looks like Patrick was is already working on some POC for that. Um, what I'm suggesting is let's have because I, I imagine like I'm expecting there should be some spec changes if like First of all, we need to decide whether we want to support that or not. And secondly, if we want to support it, there would be some spec changes required to support signing of arbitrary data. Let's go with the first question. Is there any opposition for adding a new feature request for supporting signing and verification of arbitrary data? Um, yeah, uh, for me, I think uh, uh, we, we have some history discussion around this. Uh, and at that time, uh, but later it is, uh, it was not in the V1 scope, right? So, uh, so we didn't continue this discussion and there are some histories, uh, I think at least in the comments. Uh, I think for the uh, for the feature, uh, we we should support it, but uh, it's. Uh, I think at this moment we can, uh, firstly, uh, agree on when, uh, we are going to do this. Uh, and and I saw Pradesh, you uh, already marked uh, this with, uh, uh, the next milestone because currently we didn't release V one yet, right? So it was planned for. Uh, the next uh, milestone 1.1. One one. Uh, so I also want to see uh, comments from other maintenance. Uh, do we agree the, the, the timeline first? Yeah, I saw Saji uh, supporting this. Um, but uh, regarding to the timeline uh, and in comments from other participants. Uh, Samuel. Oh, okay, my bad. Uh, I can add a, 
I can add something that like I just picked one dot one because it was the next one and there's nothing apart from one dot one right now as the next milestone. So I just picked that. Um, <laughs> I think we can first, uh, if we agree this, uh, I, I think we need to first align. Uh, I mean, this is related to how we charge these issues, right? Once we have a new issues, no matter it's a feature or bug, uh, we want to triage it. We, we, we will see whether we are going to support it or fix it. If yes, uh, when we can do that. So um, I think firstly, because there are many details we need to uh, figure out later, right? As specification and also the, the POC. But the first thing that we can first uh, discuss on, on the timing, uh, when we are going to plan it. Uh, for me, I think it is obviously uh, post the V1 uh, feature. We cannot do it uh, in V1. Uh, Samir, any other uh, maintenance? No, I think that's fine. I think we want to keep V1 as close as possible to our latest RC. And this is a significant change in terms of uh, capability, it may not be in terms of code. So yeah, I agree. This should be after V1. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, th this may answer a uh, pretty your first question, right? Uh, we are going to do it and we, we will plan it to post V1. Yeah, then I have a second question. I think uh, Patrick's already had started working on a POC. So do we have something ready? If not, then I can pick this one and start proposing some spec changes for this. Basically, I don't want my work to, like, if someone's already working on it, then I won't pick it up, else I can pick this one. Uh, yeah, uh, we do think we have a hack down, uh, uh, hack MD down, uh, uh, sorry, hack MD doc for, uh, for this one, right? Because we discussed it before. Uh, yeah, but uh, I don't remember the link. Uh, where did we put it? Uh, if it is created by you, you can just go through all the hack MD doc and uh, find it <laughs> from your homepage. Uh, I don't think I created that one. Uh, if it's Patrick, then Patrick can have a try. But we can do that offline. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I think uh, Patrick uh, uh, did some work previously on the POC, as he mentioned in the issue. And uh, yeah, as Sri mentioned, we probably have a document for for that as well. Uh, so maybe we can, uh, maybe Patrick later can find the document, we can share it to, to, to you, Pritesh, then we can uh, discuss further. Uh, that would be great. Thank you. Uh, let me take one note for um, <clears throat> uh, B land post V one uh, release. Uh, Picture and the share to create cash for uh, for the card. Okay.
Okay, then we, anything else? If no, we can move to the next one. Okay, let me click this link. Okay, this is another uh, issue under notation Go repository. Pritesh, please. Uh, yeah, I can summarize this one also. So right now notation plugin needs to be binary, even though if I am integrating notation go with any service or let's say that if I have anything, but a plugin always has to be binary, even for signing. If I want to integrate a, a signing service notation go, the notation go, go will invoke plugin as binary, which is like, uh, which increases the latency, it takes more resources on the host and things like that and becomes difficult to scale. I think there was a similar issue opened by someone else. I forgot who did that in notation. Basically the scaling up of the service was a challenge there. So what I'm here proposing is we allow support of lib uh, plugin as library along with the binary so that if someone wants to use a plugin, they can directly call the library in notation go. So what, what does this mean is instead of spawning the new process for every sign or verify operation, it would be done, done in same process. Also along with that, what I'm suggesting here is, this is a more change I'm suggesting along with this is, we went a skeleton for plugin so that if anyone wants to write their own plugin for them, it would be just implementing those two operations. They won't have to worry about boilerplate code, for example, which is like creating a CLI and things like that. So I do have a sample, a POC for that, which I tried on Thursday or Friday. I, let me check if I can find the link and I will share that quickly. Oh yeah. So here is the one which I'm not sure whether I have added the link to the comment or not, but here is the one which I just created, which basically provides any skeleton and there's an example plugin so that writing a plugin becomes simple. And we can again reuse this code base in notation go so that all con like we just reuse the code in notation go. Also, we take a de dependency on this package, and even the plugin writers take dependency on this package. So if you go to example, uh, okay, I don't know what I was. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I just shared a link on Slack, China, sorry, Zoom, if you can see. Okay, yeah. So if you see, this is just uh, basically a skeleton package for a plugin and example plugin is an example how you write a plugin. And the same way you can plug in the example plugin in Notation Go also. If you open example plugins, which is only like the, if anyone wants to write a new plugin, they will just implement the plugin.go and main go method and that's it. They won't have to write anything about dealing with CLI, having four to five commands shell out and things like that. So with, it has like two advantages. One is it's like, Plugin writers don't need to write boilerplate code. And second one is we enable plugin as library as plugin instead of just binary. So should we kind of just have this example repo somewhere checked in? Is that what, like, or another repository? Yeah, I'm proposing two things here. First one is like, okay, create a new package, something called plugin base or notation plugin, where we host all of our common interfaces for plugin and which is basically act as a skeleton. And then we can have an example plugin repo where we just consume this one and write plugin. Do you have a hand up? Yeah, Shumay, please go ahead. Yeah, so uh, I'm actually curious why do we need such kind of Uber manager stuff? Because, uh, because you are talking the notation go right, we already abstract all the 
interfaces like the plugging interface and the manager interface. So basically, uh, if you want, you can create your own manager and with your own inter um, um, plugin and just pass it to the sign or verify uh, function. And, and that's it, you can do it today without any that's modification. That's true, but it takes a lot of effort to do it. It's not intuitive. If we can make it simpler for consumers, that's the intention of this PR or issue. Like, yes, it's currently possible. That's why I said it's like, we might need some refactoring there, but it's right now it's supported, but it's not that intuitive. Can we get this example into a notation go repo? We can. But again, they will have to do a bunch of boilerplate code again, copy paste it or do it something like that. I'm just trying to eliminate the boilerplate code also there. Right. I mean, this that is can because be a of that Slack thread, right? Sorry. Was yes. this motivated from the Slack thread? Like, how do you write a plugin? And it's, it's almost impossible to. Yeah, it that. was from Slack thread also. And one more issue which was open, it was a combination of both the issues there. Like, people are having difficulty in writing plugins also. So I'm like, okay, if, the, if we can just abstract out most of the things there, it helps all the users. Yeah, I think um, I like the fact of adding the example uh, and we can test it also, right? So that way the example doesn't get um, like stale if we change the interfaces and things like that. Um, also like the good part is if we abstract out the some code to common base package, we don't have to maintain a copy of similar interface at two places, one in example and one is in notation package itself. So like, so maintaining multiple things, if you can just abstract out, it would be win-win for plugin writers and us also. So in your example, I'm guessing you have CLI code also, right? Otherwise it's going to be hard yes. to. Yes. It has uh, CLI you don't code. want the notation to take dependency on the CLI code though. Oh, that's true. That's because true. they're going to be so flag like... parsing, I don't know, Cobra, which one, whatever you use. I would say, I mean, my thinking is if you have an example in the example package, like under notation go, you could have an example, like a sample plugin. Sample plugin can still have its go mod that takes dependency on CLI. And yeah, it's going to be maybe a little bit of code duplication, but you're using, you can tell them, like, derive your plugin out of this. Uh, anyway, so, that, that's kind of, I think, my. Yeah. So how the way I structured is, I have common interface separately apart from example. Example is basically two files there and the common interface is separated from example there. Can you please open that package again? So if you see this, uh, example plugin is just two files inside that package. And then there's a base one which contains our, our interfaces for notation. But you are right, there would be dependency on CLS somewhere. So, yeah. So, this is a single interface file, I'm guessing, for all the. Yep. So, all the methods, like we have like four ways we can call plugin with generate signature, generate envelope, verify signature, and get method. And there's, I think, one more command uh, describe key. So that. Yeah, I mean, I can do an example here. That's clean, uh, complete one, which. Let me think about it. Yeah, I will get back to you on this one. That's a good point. We don't want a CLI dependency on Go. So there is, so Shue put a few links in the chat, which is there is a CLI manager and there is a. And uh, should we, yeah, should we, do you want me to open the link? Uh, yes, please. Uh, okay. Uh, manager, I opened the manager first. Okay, go to the index. Uh, so we can see a lot of stuff there. 
Oh, uh, yeah, it's all, it's also okay here. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry. Sorry. Yes, uh, yes, this is the index. So currently in the plugin package, uh, we have a uh, lot of uh, interfaces like the manager plugin, generic plugin, sign plugin, verify plugin. And then we have uh, two implementations. So one is the CLI manager implementation and another one is the CLI plugin implementation. And uh, for sign and verification, the plugin is not dependent on the specific implementation, but uh, depends on the interface. So basically, if you want, if you don't want to depend on CLI, then you can just create your own instance of plugin or manager and then pass them uh, to the uh, sign function or the variable function and that will work. Can we simplify just a magic access argument of that? The, so of CLI plugin, I just pass a new plugin implementation, which I have. So, so if you want to have a uh, own your own plugin without uh, calling the CLI, you can just uh, import it and and, and just uh, link it. You, I got to get a new manager also, right? Okay. You, you don't even need a new manager if you are passing it to a sign function. Uh, okay, can you share the code for that? How can I do that for sign function? Uh, so, uh, you can you just go to the sign function? Uh, that's in the notation go. Uh, can you scroll up to the top? And click the notation go besides the plugin. Yeah. And scrolling down, there will be a function called sign. This one? Yes. So I click this one? Yeah. There's a sign option. Uh, Uh, okay, just let me uh, double check. Uh, please wait. Okay. Basically, oh. I wanted to, what I want to achieve is if I have a plugin, I should be able to run as in process plugin also. Yeah, I yeah. also have an example for someone yes. to ride with a minimal change. Yes. Yes. So, uh, you can go back to the notion uh, goal and uh, scrolling down uh, just to the bottom. Uh, there should be a signer. Yes, go to sign a package. And there's a function called new signer from plugin. New from, yes. Okay. Plugin, yes. And it takes a plugin interface. So if you want to have your own signer uh, plugin, it can be anything. It, it can be a CI plugin, or it can be a, just a regular library or just say your customer package and they can just put it into this function and everything should work uh, without the R, of course. Yeah, that makes sense. But if I have a plugin open, so it's still like not use it, I will write a plugin. It's like, this is the scenario which I was trying to target is basically if I have a plugin source code open source, Someone should be able to directly use it without writing much code around it. Even in this scenario, the plugin source is open code source. Unless we provide some template for plugin writers, they will write in their own way. And someone has to do a write a glue script or glue piece of glue code to connect both of them. Does it make sense? Yeah, I, I think. Uh, can, can we, Shiva? Can you? see what uh, Ritesh has as an example and see how we can adapt this. Because I think having an example makes the most sense. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, jumping around functions and describing this again will take a long time for somebody who's coming new to this package, right? So um, I, I, I strongly feel like the docs in how to use or create a plugin is necessary. Maybe we'll need to refactor, maybe not refactor, but at least if you write a... Uh, we write the example in the docs or check it in. We'll probably see it through a PR much more clearly. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, 
I, I think we can have an example in the doc for the new from plugin. That will be easier. Uh, by the way, uh, for new from plugin, uh, I think we should uh, just uh, change the uh, type of plugin to sign plugin instead of just plugin. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and um, Patrick, can you just uh, uh, create an issue later after this meeting? Yeah, cool, I'll do it. Uh, I think okay. we will have the same thing for verify. Uh, oh, for verify, it's okay. It's, 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 the, uh, it's the manager, so it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, so like... Yeah, I mean, uh, even for managers, someone needs to now understand and go and like if the interface is also different for verify, then it becomes difficult if someone is new on the project to understand how to override or how do I have in process plugin or anything like that. I mean, we, we can talk more about this through PRs or something like that or probably through an example, yeah. Yes, I, I think we should provide some examples for the, uh, for the library and uh, it should be good enough. Uh, if you awesome. want to make the library better, uh, we can even have some tutorials. Yes, and if we, yeah, I, I agree there, let's talk more. Through. Yeah, I will. Let's see. Let's, if you have a doc written, how can we do it? That probably would be helpful. Like even the rough sketch works for me. Yeah, let's start working on it. We can collaborate on this one also. I remember uh, notation Go has only examples for sign and verify functions, right? I, I think we did this, we improved the API documentation for notation Go last year, but we lack examples for notation plugin. Uh So to summarize this, so uh, Patrick will create a issue uh, for adding examples to uh, adding plugin examples to uh, for the notation Go library, right? Is this uh, correct? Uh, two things. Uh, Patrick will create issues. Uh, uh, first one is for uh, revising the uh, the signer the new from plugin uh, interface. Um, so that's the first one. And next one is about creating an issue to create examples. Uh, could you repeat the first one, revise? Yeah, just, okay, just let me type it. You can type it, uh, type the second one first. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, uh, Pritesh, is this okay? We, we can start uh, firstly with these two issues. Yes, sounds good to me, yeah. Okay, uh, should we, I will just uh, copy uh, your text here. Okay, so these two issue is uh, uh, in notation uh, go represent. Uh, I, I actually have a question on the on the uh, the revising term. Uh, should it happen uh, before we won or post we won? Uh, which one? The first one, of course. Yeah, the first one. It's it's before we won because it's a breaking change. Yeah, it's it's, it's a breaking change if we do it post we won. Okay, so it, it's before we won. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Pritesh, others, uh, any comments if we want to do it? 
Mm, yeah, let's do it. If you are doing it before, when the first one and yeah, second one, I agree. Okay, so the let's first have an one example. is. Then we can see how, if we want to simplify it further. Yeah, at least the first one we should target in V1 release, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll create a PR today for the first one. Okay, if, great. Is this a breaking change? Uh, yes, because uh, plugin has uh, more interfaces than sign plugin. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not close to the code, so I comment. Uh, but uh, but I wonder why are we making a break change between yeah. RC seven and, and then V one? I would say technically it's not a breaking change because our interface is, has more functions, so it won't break customer side right, way. Yes, it won't break anything. Uh, it's just take a more relaxed uh, uh, yeah interface. So like it's no not actual production code is impacted. This okay. to, uh, for some is like it's a backward compatible change. Nothing will break in production for any other customer, but we are just adding more cons like we are removing some functionalities which are not required. I will put it like that. So even it, the customer, if the user passes them, it won't break anything for them. If it's a backwards compatible change, why can't it wait post V1? Uh, it's a coding issue, it's not a feature. So uh, currently, uh, plugin the plugin requires the plugin to implement the verification plugin, but it does not make sense for the signer because the signer does not does not need the, the verification functionalities. Well, so I struggle with that. Typically, if I am signing something, yeah. I may want to verify if I have correctly signed it before I publish my signed image. Yeah, then, then we will not call the, uh, it's not a must, it's optional. So a sign plugin can just uh, implement the sign capability. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, the verification, the capability is optional. So the, the verification of the sign signature can be verified by notation itself. I so agree. Think it, so let me think it more like this. For example, right now, our, for signing your plugin is passing, notation mandates that you need to specify both sign and verify. We are just saying for signing, you just need to verify, provide sign functionality. Right now, notation goes is mandating that you have to provide both sign and verify, even for sign operation. Okay. And for verify, also it's saying okay, you need to provide me both sign and verify functionality, even though it only calls verify. So the change is like instead of managing providing both functionalities, we for sign we say we just provide a sign functionality. For verify, just provide a verify functionality. Even for verify, if you provide sign functionality, it will still work. It's just that we have tightened our interfaces. Okay, thanks. Okay. So we agree that the first one, uh, we are targeting the V1 release. Um, and the for, for the second one is adding examples. Uh, if I think if we uh, have time to do that before we want that will be good. But it is not uh, mandatory. Uh, but the, firstly, uh, let's create for issue first. And the first one, we agree on the timeline. For the second one, we can uh, charge it later. OK. Uh, if no comments, uh, we only have 10 minutes now. So uh, uh, yeah, I saw a new item in the agenda. Uh, who who added this one? Let me open this one. Um, oh, this is me. Um, you know, I'm just coming here to. I feel like uh, the same issue in OCI. Just making sure that I can come to the calls and 
bring these issues up because we still don't have any input from the maintainers. So if this continues for multiple times, then I think uh, I'll probably like raise, try to figure out how we can escalate this to get some feedback from the uh, uh, old notary tough uh, project maintainers. Um, any anything we can uh, today, please. Yeah, uh, I I think at some point we may actually ask the org maintainers to take an action on this and go to the org maintainers and say, look, we are not seeing like for example, there is also open issues on the uh, TUF repository, so we have not hear heard from from any of the TUF repository maintainers for like more than six months already. So. We should add to the governance that if issues are not acted upon uh, for a certain amount of time, the org maintainers have the right to actually go and take action on the issues. Or PRs, of course. OK. Um... So we needed to uh, update or check the existing government's document, right? To to add this uh, scenario, as Todi mentioned. Uh, so any anything we can do now for because that needed to, uh, we also needed to review that uh, government's document, right? So anything we can take right now for the for the PRs that uh, Sajay created. Any suggestions? I think I think the point here is if there is no updates on the on this, uh, we'll bring it to the TOV uh, or the org maintainer side. Right? I think that's the reason why I'm coming here and making sure I talk about this every every week. I don't think the current group have, is taking action, but I would like to know whoever the org maintainers are. Uh, we need to kind of like at least at least figure out what the what the path forward is. Is there any guideline by CNCF on on this? Like they must have. And this, like, there must be precedence for this, right? If a project is active, nobody's responding on it, what to do with that? I, I think raising it to the org maintainers and if org maintainers don't respond, it'll probably have to go to CNC. That's the model I'm guessing it will happen. Hey, Toddy, I think the existing governance talk has a uh, has a rule that states the notary org maintainers have access to resolve escal escalated project decisions when the sub project maintainers responsible are blocked. I, I guess as org maintainers, um, like Toddy or someone else, you will have access to handle or merge that PRs if that was blocked by some cases. I think the wording in the guidance in the governance document is a little bit confusing because if it says if they are blocked, that means that they are actively working and they cannot make a decision. I, I think in this particular case, the maintainers are not responding and I have not seen anything in our governance to say what happens with uh, repo maintainers that are actually not active. So do you want to uh, amend this? Yeah, we can amend this and uh, include it in the in the governance.
Is there an yeah. aging out clause here where they age out if they are not responding or if they're not participating in anything on their repo? Six months is what was written here. Well, unresponsive six months. I don't have time for six months. <laughs> I mean, I'll be a notary for more than six months, but on that single issue for six months. Uh, six months is too long. So we like. Yeah, uh, I think if. Uh... Yeah, if we we align, then uh, we can uh, firstly update uh, these comments. I, I know there are other issues with this uh, document, but maybe firstly we can uh, add this specific situation, these scenarios. So if uh, sub-project maintainer is not responsible for issues PRs for some time, uh, the org maintainers can take uh, actions. So if we uh, agree with this, we can first uh, amend this uh, document for this purpose. A any, any comments? I can uh, write an action point for it. Uh, Todi, uh, Samuel, any any comments on this? We we can uh, amend that uh, comments doc so that uh, uh, yeah, for any PRs that sub maintainers uh, don't take any actions, the org maintainers can uh, uh, and this issue can be escalated to the org maintainers. For example, uh, in this meeting or. In, in the in the channel or in the issues, then the org maintainers can take actions. So in 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 general, like uh, we need to have process for regular reviews of issues and uh, making decisions on those issues. Uh, I don't think this process is specified. And then in that process, we can go and specify what is the process for escalating the issues to the org maintainer. So I'm bringing it because like, I think that's the logical uh, way to do it. But if we don't have it documented, then, or we may have other ways to kind of do those escalations. So I, I maybe one thing, Sajay, you can go and do in the issue is like, just say, look, I'm raising this to the org maintainers for action and, uh, uh, you can say we agreed in the notary project community meeting that we'll give like one week for action because we need to resolve this. So, org maintainers, can you please act on that? Okay, I can. I before call, getting on the call, I just commented with the notary project maintainers. I'll amend that or I'll update that to include tagging the org maintainers also. Okay. And then we need to work on the governance process, but that will take longer. So I think we need to resolve this issue as part of the naming pretty soon. All right. Thanks. Okay. Okay. So uh, Sajay will uh, execute this issue to org maintainers, right? I'll um, tag it. I'll tag the org maintainers okay. on the issue and I'll update saying that we discussed it on the call. Um, and uh, Please take action as needed. Okay, uh, I will write down that. But currently, my my screen is kind of freezing. Uh, there is uh, one item from Feynman, which is also related to the uh, uh, government's improvement plan. So please, uh, uh, we we don't have time to discuss it, but that issue is already in the discussion. So my maybe uh, Samuel Todi, uh, you can take a look. Uh, on the on, on the plan and actually there are already some ongoing activities on improving some governance document and we also tracking it in the in the notation project board so um i expect that uh, Sa uh, samuel uh told you can take a look uh, can, Todi, you please. Out, can you point out the link to that sorry i didn't see the link in the can you scroll up 
I actually have a comment before we start oh. sharing the link. So I think a while back we discussed that actually we don't want to use the discussions for that. Uh, the problem is that discussions have no way to comment on certain things. So can we instead use an issue uh, in one of the projects in HackMD document, which has a better way to comment on this? The discussion threads are not very convenient for uh, pointed feedback on anything. Um, okay, uh, I think that's a very comment. I also recall it just now. Uh, Feynman, what do you think? C could you uh, merge that document uh, or migrate that document to the HackMD so everyone can easily comment on that? Um, actually, I have concerns on using HackMD Hack to um, start the governance related plans discussion. As you know, Hack Markdown is not that uh, it's not that public as we as we do every discussion, every proposal on the GitHub, uh, whatever the GitHub issues, PRs or discussions. So uh, I, I would prefer that maybe we can maybe I can raise in a PR, maybe I can raise a PR to gather more comments for this proposal and uh, using uh, GitHub to, to discuss the governance plan is much convenient for us to connect and associate it with those governance issues. But if we change to HackMD, it will not be that convenient and public. And also uh, every comments, every activities happened uh, and also conversations happened in GitHub will be recorded by uh, CNCF DevStats tool. Toddy, please. Then my proposal is to use a normal issue and not the discussion forums there, because that kind of, we have too many places where we do the things. That's my concern. And uh, actually overcomplicates our communication so if we don't like HackMD, then let's just file a new issue and track it as an issue and we can close it as an issue. You can have the same discussions in the issue as in the discussion forums. And at least everybody is looking at the issues and uh, I personally am not looking at the discussion forums. Sure. And uh, there's a function that we can transfer the discussion to issue directly, it will be super easy to transfer it. I use uh, GitHub discussion as I think this is an early um, idea for open discussion and I'm gathering ideas from uh, everyone or from maintainers in this meeting. And I can also transfer it from discussion to GitHub issue. Uh yeah, thanks, Feynman and Toddy's comments. I think we already over time. Yeah. Uh, so Feynman, could you yeah uh, transfer this uh, discussion to issue based because uh, yeah we we, we still didn't use the discussion recently. Uh, so uh, please uh, transform it to issue and share the link in the in maybe Slack channel later, and then uh, Samuel and Toddy and other maintainers can comment. Okay, okay. thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks folks. Uh, we, we end up this meeting now. Thank you. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you, thank you, bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, bye. -bye. bye. Thank you. bye.